Welcome to this overview and demonstration of NetApp Global File Cache, or as we call it, GFC version 1.0. Today I'm going to recap on the GFC solution and how it helps organizations on their hybrid or public cloud journey. Subsequently, I'll provide a demo on how to enable GFC through NetApp's Cloud Manager platform, enabling GFC and finally deploying the GFC software at the edge to provide a seamless user experience. But first, let me recap what GFC actually is. GFC allows organizations to consolidate their unstructured data into a hybrid or public cloud footprint, any of the major hyperscalers. This software-based solution runs on Windows Server and provides an intelligent file cache at the edge, which caches only the data that's required in those distributed locations. As the solution transparently integrates in your environment, users that are currently accessing local file servers will achieve a similar experience accessing and collaborating on that file data. Because of intelligent file caching, streaming, compression, and delta differencing technology, the software allows organizations to drastically reduce cost of distributed storage whilst guaranteeing a high performance experience to the users. Now let me go back to the problem. Many organizations are trying to lift and shift workloads into the public cloud, aiming to move file servers away from the edge into a central storage footprint. And they're telling their users to access data over the wide area network, sometimes thousands of miles away. Because of the nature of the Windows file sharing protocol, SMB, this distance aspect becomes a bottleneck as distance equals latency and disruption to the users. Global file cache software has been designed to overcome this problem using caching technology to bring the data close to where the users reside. Therefore, we've identified three major use cases. One, distributed file server consolidation, leveraging the cloud for a single enterprise data footprint for all of your users simplify data management and improve business continuity. Number two, global VDI deployments enable regional VDI farms to keep user productivity high and keep data close to the VDI farms or users without needing replication or data sync overhead. And number three, large file collaboration. Enable a single set of data for users globally to leverage virtual teams, increase their productivity for team and collaborative workflows. GFC creates an end-to-end -end data fabric. The software is enabled in your hybrid cloud data center or in the public cloud next to your NetApp storage platforms, including Cloud Volumes ONTAP, Cloud Volume Service, or Azure NetApp Files. A virtual file share provides transparent access to hundreds of terabytes of unstructured data while only caching what's actually needed at the edge. So what's new? GFC 1.0 has been released in August 2020 and now allows hybrid cloud integration for customers that have NetApp in their on-prem data centers that require the GFC solution to integrate with that as part of their cloud journey. Another major milestone is Cloud Manager integration. Today's demo will show you how this process works. Top to bottom, deploying a CVO HA pair in Azure and enabling GFC on top of that through automated provisioning of resources and streamlined deployment and enablement at the edge. Let's dive into the Cloud Manager demonstration, where we're going to deploy Cloud Volumes ONTAP HA in Microsoft Azure and enable GFC on top of that. For this demo scenario, we're going to use an Azure data center in East US and two distributed locations, one in the US in San Fran and one in the Netherlands in Amsterdam. And as you can see, those locations are far and far away from the central data repository. And what does that mean? You know, many organizations that are trying lift and shift, like I said before, their users are struggling with performance. You know, we've seen metrics and we've captured these real life metrics with some of our clients where it takes up to 30, 40, 50 seconds to open up a relatively small word Excel PowerPoint file. Guess what it means for CAT files, for 3D models, for complex data sets. It's going to take ages to open up a file over the wide area network. And therefore, you know, just lifting and shifting to data into the public cloud becomes unusable. The following reference architecture outlines what's required in the public cloud and what's deployed at the edge. So on the right hand side, you can see the public cloud, in this case, Microsoft Azure with CVO HA pair deployed. And this is where you manage your centralized storage platform. That's where you're managing your volumes, your shares, your ACLs, your backups, your snapshots and everything. On top of that, we're going to deploy a GFC management server and a GFC core instance, which is automatically enabled through cloud manager. Once that's completed, we'll be deploying GFC at the edge locations, in this case, San Francisco and in Amsterdam, where we're deploying a virtual machine instance and deploying the software on top of that to create an intelligent file cache at the edge. 
Those edge sites are interconnected with the GFC core in the public cloud through either a site-to-site -site VPN or express route connectivity. Now let's navigate to Cloud Manager. And what we're doing in Cloud Manager, we're adding a working environment. We selected Microsoft Azure, Cloud Volumes ONTAP HA pair, and we're providing the details around the working environment. In this case, the cluster name GFC Shares. Once that's done, we're adding the password credentials for the username admin, and we'll click Continue. The next step is actually enabling or disabling cloud compliance and or backup to cloud, which provides additional functionality for the management and the security of your backend storage platform. We're selecting a region, in this case, East US. We're selecting the designated VNet, the subnet, and we're either generating a new security group or using an existing security group. And I'll use the existing one that I have. For the licensing part, you have two options. You can use pay as you go, or you can use BYOL. For the purpose of this demo, we select pay as you go. Let's click continue. And we're now prompted with two pre-configured packages of the Cloud Volumes ONTAP solution, either standard or premium. For this demo, we're gonna create our own configuration. And we're gonna use uh, Cloud Volumes ONTAP premium and there's a few options we have in terms of disk types or VM types. And in this case, we're selecting DS5 V2 in Azure. And the disk type that we're selecting um, can vary from 500 gigabytes to eight terabytes of storage per disk. We're disabling blob tiering because we wanna achieve optimal performance for this demo. So we're applying those settings and we're continuing. Here's some additional parameters that you can enable to secure communication to the storage. Now we're creating the volume. So we're prompting the volume name GFC shares. I'm gonna make it 500 gigabytes in size and I'm gonna call it share one. Once we're done, we'll click continue. Now we're prompted to add the DNS primary IP address of the active directory domain that we're joining. Subsequently, I'll be putting in the AD domain to join and the credentials required to join the actual domain. Now I click continue. Storage efficiencies can be left enabled or can be disabled as required. Let's click continue for now. As a summary, we're reviewing the actual configuration, the network uh, deployment, as well as the storage setup. And by checking the checkbox and clicking go, we're actually launching the deployment and Cloud Manager will actually spin up the HA pair and all of the required resources in the Microsoft Azure tenant to enable this centralized storage platform. Now that we're done, we're clicking the work environment GFC shares and on the right hand side in the right panel, we see global file cache. We click enable GFC. Now we'll be taken through a wizard-like process uh, to enable GFC and subsequently deploy the GFC core. The first step in the process to enable global file cache service. This allows you to make sure that all of the prerequisites and solution requirements are in place, such as network rules, firewall rules, inbound port rules, as well as the use of a service account, which is critical, which needs to be created in your Active Directory domain as a domain user, which will subsequently be embedded within the services that the GFC core is running. Make sure you consult the list of AV exclusions required for the infrastructure. Now let's put in the number of GFC edges I'm planning to deploy and click continue. I'll be prompted to the next page, global file cache service setup. And what I need to do is put in a local admin name of the VM that is yet to be deployed. Subsequently, I'll put in the VM name Remember the diagram, it was called GFC MS1, and I click Enable GFC Service. The next step takes approximately five to 10 minutes to complete. But for the purpose of this demo, we've accelerated this process. Global File Cache Service has been deployed successfully. Let's click Continue. So the next phase is Deploy Global File Cache Core where the core instance, GFC Core 1, will be joined to the actual 
Active Directory domain, the same domain that we just created the service account in. And again, we need to provide the admin user and the admin password to join this GFC Core instance to your Active Directory domain, as well as supply the service account user details, the username and password that you just created in your Active Directory domain. The name of this instance is gonna be called GFC Core 1, and we deploy GFC Core. Again, another VM is now being deployed automatically in your Microsoft Azure subscription. This takes up to five, 10 minutes. Once completed, go to the dashboard and you can actually see your inventory of GFC management server instances and core instances. Click deploy GFC Edge to actually deploy your Edge instances in your on-premise sites, in this case in Amsterdam and San Francisco. You'll be automatically redirected to a documentation page on NetApp Cloud Central and you'll be guided through the process from there. A full-blown user guide is available with all of the principles around the GFC solution and all of the advanced parameters and configuration aspects that you can consider for your deployment. But for now, let's go back to the quick steps required to deploy the GFC Edge in one of our distributed locations. Just as a recap, on the left-hand side, that's where the Edge instances reside. That's what we're gonna deploy now. And we're gonna deploy this GFC Edge instance as a virtual machine template using VMware vSphere. But you could have Hyper-V or you could even deploy the software installation package right on top of a physical server of any kind, as long as it supports Windows Server 2016 or 2019. For now, we're selecting our virtual appliance template and we are deploying and provisioning that OVA or OVF template in the environment. And once that's completed, we're providing basic server configuration aspects, install, license, and configure the global file cache software to be associated with our global file cache configuration in the public cloud. Let's remote desktop into the GFC Edge instance in San Francisco. Once we launch the NetApp global file cache software from the desktop, will be prompted for initial configuration. The first step in the process is to license the Edge instance with our GFC management server VM in the public cloud. So we'll provide the actual IP address or FQDN and the customer ID associated. Subsequently, we associate the Edge instance with the core instance by providing the Cloud Fabric ID. In this case, I've chosen AZ US East and we're providing the FQDN or IP address of the actual core VM instance. Optionally, you can enable SSL encryption on top of your existing encrypted TCP tunnel. Once you click next, the configuration completes and the edge is associated with the core instance and shares are enumerable through the virtual file share at the edge. So again, on the right hand side, that's where we have our central data set, GFC shares share one. That's the backend file server and central file share that we're managing and maintaining. At the edge, we're creating a virtual file share that associates with Azure East US, which is the Fabric Association, and the backend file server and the central file share are transparently visible as part of that namespace. Additionally, you can use a global namespace to present a unified namespace to your users, either in edge locations or in the public cloud. Now get to user experience. Once we've provisioned Cloud Volumes HA, created the volume, a file share, and deployed GFC Core, GFC Management Server, and deployed our Edge instances, we can actually navigate as a user to the virtual file share. And by doing so, I'm typing in the actual UNC path, which is the UNC path of this case, the server in San Francisco. And as you notice, you'll be able to navigate through the file share structure as you would normally from a local file server. But in this case, you're seeing the real time data that is saved, stored and provisioned in your central cloud storage platform. For ease of use, I'm now creating a drive mapping to my virtual file share, which will show all of the files and folders that are centrally stored and provisioned, but through the local cache. As you can see, my user is located in San Francisco. I'm gonna enlarge the icons to show you 
what it looks like to navigate through that centralized folder structure. You can see the little cross mark on the file, which means the file is not cached yet. So if I double click the actual Word document, my application launches, the GFC Edge will communicate with the GFC Core, take out a central file lock on behalf of the user in San Francisco, stream and compress the data over the wide area network, and allow my user to work in real time on that data. In this case, a Word document. I'm gonna make some incremental edits to this file. This is just a simple file, but think about large Excel documents, think about CAT models, 3D models, it can be really complex. I'm just gonna make a simple change, and I'm gonna save these changes. And any of these changes happen at local speeds and use its right back caching to move the delta differences in a streamed and compressed fashion over the wide area network to the central storage platform on CVO in Microsoft Azure. Now you'll see that the cross mark has disappeared from the actual Word document, which means that the data is cached locally. And I'm gonna to navigate to my Amsterdam client, opening up an Explorer window and typing in the UNC path to open up the virtual file share from my Edge instance, fast data, AZ USE, GFC shares, share one, global data. I can see the exact same data through this namespace. And again, for simplified use, I'm gonna map a network drive. You can take the same UNC path and embed that within a DFS namespace to create a global namespace. But for now, I'm just gonna access this data through a network drive. And I'm clicking on the same Word document that we just had open in San Francisco. Because the data is not cached, the edge will communicate with the core, stream and compress the data over the wide area network, and try to take out a central file lock. But as you can see in this case, the file is already in use by the other user in San Francisco. So I'm gonna ask for a notification when the file is available for read write purposes. Navigating back to my San Francisco desktop, I'm closing the Word document. Now going back to Amsterdam, I get a message that this file is available for editing so I can click read write to get the latest and greatest incremental changes to the document so I can work in a consistent manner on this Word document. And that's great because now I have the latest and greatest version. I'm gonna make my edits and I'm gonna send that over to my other colleagues to collaborate on. So this proves that you have a single set of data stored on CVOHA in Microsoft Azure on the file shares and volumes that we've created and users can interface with that in any distributed location, regardless of latency and or bandwidth. And at all times, maintaining the performance at the edge as if you're working from a traditional file server. And that's what you can see in the overview right here. Remember the diagram that we showed previously, the before in red, and the performance results with GFC in green, drastically improving file opening and saving times when accessing data from the public cloud. Key benefits and results. We're establishing a single set of data in the hybrid or public cloud. We're leveraging a software-based strategy that creates an end-to-end -end secure environment managed through Cloud Manager, leveraging storage efficiencies and integrating fully with NetApp's cloud volume snapshot, backup, restore, and expansion options. We coexist with in-cloud workloads such as VDS, HPC, or SAP HANA. And last but not least, we're delivering real-time access to centralized data in the public cloud with global file locking. For more information on global file cache, navigate to Cloud Central at cloud.netup.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.